What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to some more magic. Magic mail. Magic mail. So, it's been a little bit. I've had these packages sitting in here for several days. And now, we're going to open them. Beautiful. Your favorite, your favorite and mine. You know, it might just be my favorite. I don't know. But we got some shipping shields. Oh, oh, fascinating. So here's another thing I did. I went and looked at all of the mountains, all the basic lands that I remotely like, that I like even a little bit, that I would consider using for pre-modern. And if they were under like eight bucks for 20 of them, which is the amount I use, I rarely need more than 20. Uh, I went and picked them up. I think these were like six bucks for 20. And this is a decent Rob Alexander Mountain from Mercadian Masks. It's not my favorite, but it's definitely good. It's just a good looking mountain. And here is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 of them. So. Should be five more somewhere. I don't know where. This is this is a, an idea that I really like when when sellers do. So you have this package, and it's literally in one third of a nine card sheet. Holds the cards fantastically, and it's just like this fits perfectly into an envelope, and like you know they're not going to move because they're stuck in these sides. So it's like, it's it's just a great little method to, to ship cards, I think. So if you guys were looking for a way to ship like multiple cards without like stacking them on top of each other, because I was actually told by the post office, if you stack cards in such a way that they're too thick, that's what makes them non-machinable. But if you spread them out so that there's like five, five, and five, then all of a sudden you can machine them. This is literally <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 human tokens. And I was going to use them for fourth Aerolingus. Eorlingus? Eor Still don't know. Could be anything. But yeah. Trample and Haste in a 2-2. Two -two. This is the first 2-2 two -two red human knight token with Trample and Haste. So I had to pick them up because there are none others available. But it's worth noting because they're from the commander set, they are two sided. And so there's just a basic human 1-1 one, one on the other side. But we got them for the, the human knights. Must be knights, as they say. No one says that. Who says that? Nobody. Okay. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Two more Boromir, Gondor's Hope. If you recall, I picked up three of these. I literally thought he could only trigger when he came into play. And then I realized it was when he was when he attacks as well. So that's pretty good. So now I have five, one for the cube, and then four for just play stuff. Because that dude is probably going to see some amount of play. He's only four mana. This guy's got a little, little hole in it. Looks like a little rat chewed it. And that's where we'll use, that's where we'll get in. I was going to say that's where we'll use to get in. That doesn't make any sense. So these are some more basics that fit the criteria I just mentioned. I think this is actually a very popular forest and it's a John Avon. So I was actually surprised to see that like 20 of these were only like also six or seven bucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 13. 13, oh, and then a secret. Only 13 of this John Avon. But this is a great looking forest. My only issue with this forest is that I am very particular about the basics I use. I like the basics I use to look like the mana they produce. So I want green forests. I want red mountains. If I see a red, if I see a mountain that has a, a big black mountain on it, I'm going to think it's a Rakdos land. I'm going to think it's like a Sulphurous Springs or something. So when I look at this, I see a lot of yellow, but it's still just such a good looking forest that I don't mind. And then this is the... This is the classic planes I've chosen for for pre-modern. It's an Eric Peterson planes. 
Um, honestly, I don't know a ton of things he's done, but this is one of the best, most iconic planes that you can that you can that you can think of. Um, and they are all Odyssey, not not Dominator remastered, which they were reprinted in. And it's funny because there's several of my favorite lands reprinted in Dominary or Mastered. One of them is that really good Rob Alexander mountain that I showed you from Portal Second Age. One of them is that amazing looking, actually I might just have them right here. This mountain, which is my favorite mountain, was reprinted in Dominary or Mastered. This swamp, which is my favorite swamp, was reprinted in Dominaria Remastered. And this Plains was reprinted in Dominaria Remastered. So it's really funny how like three of my favorite lands were reprinted in Dominaria Remastered. It's interesting. It makes me think like, it, you know, art, all art is subjective and people have different favorites, but it makes me think that like, my favorites, the, the, some of the favorites I like, are not in the minority. This is just four judges familiar. I had four of these, and I still do have four of them, but they're in the Mono Blue Devotion deck. I have a series of iconic magic decks put together with all of the original cards in them. So if a card was played during Theros block, all of the cards in that block are the Theros versions, so that it's, it's, it's time period appropriate. I wouldn't have like a cons of Tarkir and Negate in there because that was way after Theros. Um, so that's where my judges familiars are. But, so then I needed four for, for my play sets. I, I also like having, <laughs> if I have cards in like the cube or if I have cards in, in, a, in a different deck, like one of the iconic decks, I like buying other cards so that I don't have to keep replacing them because that's super obnoxious. Like the last, the last thing I could imagine wanting to do is like if I have to build a deck for an event, I have to go through like six different decks, find all the cards, put them in the deck, get back home, take all those cards out, figure out where they go, put them back. Maybe if I don't take the deck apart that night, then I'm like, where do these go? I, for I totally forgot where they went. So who knows? This is four Shadow Rifts. Target creature gains Shadow until another turn, draw a card. I saw this card being played in pre-modern and they're like a dime. So, I picked up four. At the worst, it's a cantrip, you know? Everybody loves a cantrip. I have a big-ass box here full of full of envelopes, and it's kind of like Christmas. Ooh, this one's exciting. This one. Again, I, I'm not sure which way to open it. It was from the side. It was a side-loading. This is an ivory tower from Antiquities. Really exciting. like this one a lot. There's obviously uh, several decks in pre-modern that are playing Ivory Tower, and Ivory Tower costs like six, seven bucks in antiquities. Not a, not a super big investment, but um, yeah, it was nice to, I mean, they still look super cool, right? Like even if this isn't a super expensive card, like it's still just cool to have an Ivory Tower from the OG. Oh, oh, it is a little bit worn though. It has a little bit of play on the back. It's supposed to be MP, what do you guys think? Is that an MP? Probably, but it's cutting it close. There's a good amount of scuffing. But what are you going to do? I mean, sometimes it's like situations like that where it's like uh, the difference is not going to be. It's not enough for I'm like, give me 40 cents off. Like the difference between an MP and an HP is probably like 750 to 690, right? So like how much am I really getting? Like, what am I getting back there if I if I complain, you know? This is a play set of Gem Palm Polluters. This was a cycle, which had cycling from Legions. And when you cycled these, you did something equal to the number of creatures you had in play. There was a goblin one. There was maybe a soldier one. And they all did something based on that, based on what you had in play. So this target player loses life equal to each zombie in play. And you still get to draw the card too, so. But it's also a 4-3 for 6, which is a great deal. Great deal. 
is the bubble mailer. So I'm sure it's gonna be something, something spicy, right? It's, it doesn't look that spicy. I gotta use this because it's got like the, the hard tape on the top, the, the tape that doesn't tear. Two Patriarchs Biddings from Onslaught. Two OG Patriarchs Bidding. Each player chooses a creature type. Each player returns all creatures of the type from their graveyard to play. This card is so fantastic. There was a deck called Goblin Bidding back in the day. Back during Onslaught. And uh, you would basically just sacrifice all your goblins to like Skirk Prospector. And then play Patriarchs Bidding and get them all back. Patriarchs Bidding is just a super cool card. It's a card that has like always been cool, you know? The ability is like just so niche that like you just don't see it very often. So now we got a third. Wow, this one looks mint. A third undiscovered paradise. Well, there's some little little nicks at the top there, but otherwise very, very good shape. Very curious if this is an LP or an MP. If this is an MP, it's fantastic. It's a great looking MP. But I think that's three of the four that I need. So there should still be one <clears throat> rattling around here somewhere. This one's from Riverside, California. Oh god, really. Like, when, when you tape it in here like this, I'm just like, I just have to rip it off the, the literal packing sheet. Yeah. We're having a good time. Oh, God, and the top is taped. This is... I could just open it like this. But, God, how much less satisfying is that than when you do the flick, you know? And you gotta find the little divot. There we go. Is divot the word I want? Probably not. And as you saw the one Rotlung reanimator previously, we got two more here working towards that playset. Super, super cool. Great, great card for clerics and also just a great card in general. Like the best thing about Onslaught was that they had so many creatures that had both a species and a, and a class, right? So this was a zombie cleric which meant it worked really well in both zombie decks and cleric decks. And there was so much overlap that it was so satisfying. And I got one more for you here. This will be the last, last of it. Let's see what it is. Is it exciting? A little bit. Maybe, I guess we'll see. Come on, oh, there it is, yeah. So that's just satisfying. The old flick of the wrist. Do you think one day we'll get cut with that? Three Parallax Tides. Also a card seen play in pre-modern. Obviously, if you see a card old like this, you can just assume I'm picking up for pre-modern. That just makes sense. But yeah, Parallax Tide, super cool card. Remove Fade Counter from it. Remove target land from the game. But then when it leaves the battlefield, each player returns all, all lands that were removed with this. So you're basically just denying them lands for a little bit. And every Fade Counter you remove off of this makes it that much quicker that they're going to come back. So it's kind of like, you know, <laughs> it's, you know how it works. You know how Parallax Tide works. But thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate y'all. Hopefully you enjoyed those those sweetie boys. And uh, be sure to subscribe. Be sure to follow. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Today's haul, we had a lot of lands. A lot of lands and a lot of tokens. Like all the lands and tokens are here. And all the rest is here. So, you know, not too bad. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.